and for our future. You too can help provide electricity for our future by reducing your use of electricity today. Remember, conserve whenever possible. Good. This is special delivery to the Potholes Reservoir in eastern Washington. Thousands of trout juveniles are being unloaded as part of a special program happening here and becoming very popular elsewhere. You got it? The Department of Fish and Wildlife, working with a number of private groups, are helping supplement the fish population in lakes across the state. Dave Meesberg and brother Mike are one of many coordinators of this effort on the massive Potholes Reservoir. Well, this is kind of a cool thing we're doing out here. These are the trout that would normally be planted in the reservoir, and they plant them, oh, it's about 12 to 13 fish per pound. Well, it, what they do at that size, they're only about maybe five, four to five inches long. They become great fish food and great bird food. So we're taking them and we're transporting them from the uh, fish and wildlife um, trout hauling trucks into these um, big tubs and then we're going to take them out and we're going to put them in the net pens out here. We will have eight net pens and each net pen holds 20,000 trout and we'll feed them all through the winter until about the beginning of May whenever the water temperature gets to be about 60 degrees and then we release the fish and at that time they went from 12 to 13 pound fish per pound up to about um, hopefully between five and six fish per pound, and you're ending up with a fish about nine inches long, nine to ten inches long, and their survival rate is fantastic. The fish we released last year, right now they're catching out here, they're about two pounds. The fish that we released three years ago, um, they're up words of between four and five pounds now, so it's, it's really proven to be a great deal. They do, they do this all over the, the state. I, I guess I know they do it up at Banks Lake and Roosevelt and, and um, all of those areas up in there. And Moses Lake has a net pan program going. This is our third year. This is the start of the third season. The first season we had 60,000 trout. And then the next year, last year we got 80,000. And now this year we've got our permits all in line and we're gonna get 160,000. So this is our third season of doing it. It's worked out really well. We had a better growth rate than anybody else in our area as far as the fish. We like to feed them a little more than what they say. Uh, the fish comes from the, the hatchery in Moses Lake out on the end of uh, Broadway Extended out there. It's a um, fish and wildlife funded hatchery. There's a grant that um, helps pay for the net pens and the food. The kids love it, all, whether they're six or 60. It's just been a really, really a good thing for us all. about the average length right there, five, six inches. We'll get some bigger ones every once in a while. They don't want to uh, swim downstream. They naturally want to swim upstream, so you have a hard time getting them to go down. Once all the fish are here, um, they'll average about probably four to 5,000 pounds of food a month. Probably, that'll be in about two months after they grow up a little bit more and we'll feed them pretty good. And when the water temperature is warm, looks like a miniature dog food. Fishing is a multi-million dollar a year tourist industry and the lifeblood of many businesses. With the continued efforts of outdoorsmen like the Meesbergs, the fun sport of fishing is sure to be available for many generations. Stay tuned, later in the show, Dave heads out on the water with fishing host Hobart Manns to catch some three-year-old trout. He looks a bit as big as the other one. Beautiful. Before catching some of those beautiful trout, let's head to the seafood school in Astoria, Oregon for a great outdoor recipe for grilled tuna. 
Eric, what are we cooking today? We're cooking albacore tuna. And a special recipe? Special recipe with shrimp relish. Well, tell you what, let's get it on the grill, okay. and then I got a lot of questions for you. Okay. Get them on the grill, that's nice and hot. You got your portable barbecue today. Yeah. I really like that idea. I like to call it my Toby Q. So we're cooking tuna fish today, and we you're gonna add to it what? I'm gonna make a shrimp relish, and I have some ingredients here. If I could have you hand me the bowl, thank you. Um, we have some fresh Oregon pink shrimp that I'm gonna add to the bowl, Hobart. That looks like about a cup and a half. I have some chopped dill pickle here that I'm gonna add. Probably three quarters of a cup. Uh, the cucumber that's been uh, peeled, seeded, and chopped. Some green onion that's been chopped. We're gonna add that up. Um, I have a little lemon juice here. I'm gonna add some of that. Fresh squeezed lemon juice. And now we're gonna add some toasted sesame seeds. Okay. A couple tablespoons. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna chop this up, and I usually like to do this at the last, simply because I don't want the avocado to brown. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about the uh, Duncan Law Consumer Seafood Center? We do seafood cooking classes. We do guest chef demonstrations on our website, and at our facility here, we have close to 100 seafood recipes free for anybody to come in and get. Yeah. Okay. Now this avocado we're chopping up to add to the seafood relish. So in this relish, we I can see shrimp, green onions, dill pickles, cucumber, salt, cucumber, avocado, and lemon juice. Lemon juice and sesame seed you've toasted. That's right. And now we're going to do what to it? We're just going to mix it up, stir mm -hmm. it up. Combine, mix, stir. That's right. Toss, all those things that they use in professional cooking. All the above. Combine. You got it all together there now. That's can, a nice looking. You can see how pretty roll. it is too. It's gorgeous. Looks like the fish are ready. Why don't you capture the fish okay. and we'll see what this tastes like. Tuna fish. Relish. Seafood relish. There we go. Ooh, that looks good, Eric. And then we just take the relish, Hobart, and we'll just kind of pile it right in the center here. Mound it up a little. Mound it up. And for outdoor cooking, that's quite a presentation. Quite a presentation and real easy, too. This is all for me. You're not getting any, right? No, it's yours, then. Oh, God, that looks good. Here's the recipe for grilled tuna with shrimp relish. Or go online to www.northwestoutdoors.org. The Potholes Reservoir has been involved with raising net pin trout for a number of years and have started seeing the benefits. Tourism dollars are up because catching a healthy trout is just fun. I wanted to try, to try going way out and I lightened the load and sped the um, troll up. Well, I thought you left the gear on the dock. I saw that fish jump out there. <laughs> <laughs> you just barely pulled it off and got the fish going. <laughs> and he's a nice fish too. When I say nice, I think beautiful is the better word. You we guys. haven't even seen him. Can I knock him off with the net for you? I would appreciate it if you would. That way I don't have to get any scales on my hands. One of the nice things about it too is we're using relatively light gear. You've got a, a relatively light rod, six pound test. Six pound test. And uh, no big weight on it to slow the fish down so you're really getting the fish to be active. He looks like a small salmon, a little coho, yes. fat as a football. Now, how, do, how am I supposed to do this if I go <laughs> like that in the water? That will help you uh, eliminate that. Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. Beautiful. When you turn these fish loose, they're what, six, eight inches? In they're the they're more like eight to ten, eight to nine inches probably is what they are. They do it by the, um, actually they size the fish by the pound. When we put them in the pens in October, they're about 13 and a half fish to the pound. And when we release them, they're four and a half to five fish per pound. But practically double in body size. And uh, the fish we've released this year are already gained almost two and a half, three inches. Actually, it looks like he's probably doubled his body weight every year, too. They get to a certain length, and then they start turning into footballs. And the girth just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. 
good. Great. Oh, it's a fun fishery. It's like fishing for little silvers. And you put in a, over 100,000 of these a year. 160,000 a year. That's incredible. You've got an assortment of lures laid out here, uh, and they're all good for the lake. They all they all work fine in different areas. Fun way to fish is with uh, little little dive, little plugs, the rapalas, trout copies, fives or sevens are nice. Uh, flatfish, f4, f5, not too big. Um, your rooster tails, a darker color works better out here. You go with a black, green, or a brown, and uh, lots of line out and a little tiny split shot. Your needlefish, uh, a lot of guys troll this with uh, leaded line. And then what we're doing out here today is just a worm harness. It's uh, got two hooks set up in it and troll this faster than you think you should. Go up a couple, three feet from the needlefish, put yourself a little split shot there just to get it down and let out a hundred feet of line. Sounds like a lot, but get it way out behind you. Plus, when you get to fish on that way, you get to fight them for a long time, too. On this light gear, it does fight for a long oh, time. Oh, and this, yeah, and use light tackle. All these willows are everywhere now. They've just, uh, they're even way underwater. So you got willows on the tops of the islands, and then they'll come down, growing down the sides of the of the islands because all these are islands all these little tops of these brushes are islands and when you get to the belly of the channel then it's just all sand that's all that's left down there so lots of structure and a good sandy bottom where we're fishing at right now and trying to trying to stay in 15 to 20 feet of water he didn't like that at all what do you got on there oh that's a fairly serious trout <laughs> I've never seen an albino blue heron before. What do we do differently here, guys? She's reeling and turn around. Now you had that fish out 150 feet and he's pulling. They don't want to show their, see any daylight without any jumping. They're generally pretty good fish too. Is this fish that's out here probably a product of one of the uh, net pin programs that you guys have been this running? This is two years ago. Not last season or not this recent season. This is probably, looks like probably a 97, 98. That's a great looking fish. trout. They fight so well. Ooh. That may be a trout, but he sure looks like a football. Dandy on the water, a lot of color. Is it, it's not a hybrid though, there, or is it a hybrid fish that we're... Look at the color in that one. Yes. Get you. Here you go. Now this is last year's fish found out of the net pens. The growth factor is not quite as big. But he looks every bit as big as the other one. Come on, fella. Beautiful fish. Just about. Bye bye. There you go. There are 12 recreational net pins located at certain lakes around central Washington. And according to the Department of Fish and Wildlife, the results are in. More people are catching fish and the tourism dollar is up. Now from the U.S. Forest Service, here are some things to keep in mind the next time you are operating an off-road vehicle. Today, many people are enjoying the outdoors on different ORV type vehicles. I'd like to talk to you about some safety tips that can make your experience more enjoyable. On ATVs today, if you're gonna operate them on Forest Service land in the mountains, you have to have a Forest Service approved spark arrestor, just like this one. Boots are a very important part of your safety equipment. Some other personal protective gear are gloves and a helmet. As with two wheeled vehicles, Four-wheel drive vehicles also have safety features that you can use to make your experience more enjoyable. One is the seat belt. Another tip for operating a four-wheel drive vehicle in the mountains is use a speed that's appropriate for the weather conditions. Excessive speed can cause you problems. One final tip for all ORVs is to make sure your ORV is in good working condition. That could include your brakes and your tires. Oh, and by the way, remember, don't use alcohol when you use your ORV.
the beauty of the Willamette Falls near Portland, Oregon. A great backdrop for sightseers, but anglers that clog the river only have one thing in mind. This is late spring on one of the Columbia's main tributaries, the Willamette River. Northwest Outdoors is here with Portland Fishing Adventures and Mike Lombard to have some fun fishing for shad, a fish usually caught for bait for big sturgeon. Uh, the shad uh, uh, start in the Willamette uh, system here that we're fishing here today. They start usually about the second or third week of April. Uh, we're actually in the peak of it right now. Uh, the Columbia River run actually really doesn't get going till oh, probably around Oh, mid-May you can catch some in the Columbia. The, uh, they'll peak, uh, the peak in the Columbia will be like the 7th or 10th of June till the end of June. You'll have days uh, that you might have 60, 80, 90, 100,000 uh, shad going over the dam in one day. Net, please. Net, boy. Let's see if we can do this trick here. Oh, come on. There we go. That is. Uh, excuse me, it's actually 16 and 1 8 inches. <laughs> I apologize. All right. While you're doing that, I'll go ahead and finish this. Okay. That was kind of a, it is, isn't it? a bad one handed attempt there. That was good, though. You got a fish in one uh, hand and a net in the other, and we're having lots of fun. This is uh, probably about as exciting as fishing can really get, Mike. You consider how many of these things we get uh, uh -huh. in a day. Exactly. The 25 is a bag limit, oh, and if you want to keep them, you can catch them. Right yeah. Between smoking them, canning or kippering them and, as one would do, yep. and this fish was... Uh, He's pulling pretty good, isn't he? Yeah. I better tighten that drag just a smidge. I look oh. like a other guy that used to... I know that would milk a fish. He'd uh -huh. leave that drag set down and, and play the fish for about, oh, it's really a fighter. You look at the, the crank and be going, but the, uh, ooh, that's a big, big. Ooh. A lot of, oh, lot of, honey, move that lure out of the way. A lot of color on this one. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, this is the biggest shad we've had today, well, right here. Biggest this one is a big had. shad. This is a big shad. Come on, let's not pull that hook out, huh? I'm going to get him and up, 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 and coming. Ah, ha, ha. Look at the size of that shad, will you? Big lady. Oh. A lot of row in that fish. Look at that. Isn't that a beauty? Yes, it is. And hooked in the hooked only in place the... it couldn't pull loose. Yep. Wow, is that a beauty? Dandy. And that's why they're fun on light tackle. This is late Chinook salmon fishing on the Willamette River, but a great time to catch shad. The shad are part of the herring family and can only be found on the Willamette, Rogue, Umpqua, and the Columbia Rivers. What we're doing here is that we're back bouncing our gear, trying to scope out some line. We want to get that line out there about 100 feet, so you kind of lift your rod tip, slack off a little line under your thumb, let it bounce down, pump it up a couple times, let it bounce down, and let some line come off. Let the current pick up the belly of the line, pick up that sinker. You're just walking it or back bouncing it back in the current to the place where, like where my rod is now, now I can drop off another five or six feet of line and a couple more pumps. You get down there to the angle or the area that you think where the fish might be or striking, you're gonna engage it, then you can just kind of hold on and pump your rod a little bit, you can feel those fish hit. As we said earlier, they don't tap, they don't nibble, they don't bite, they strike. It's kind of funny, every time one of us hooks a fish, you can almost bet that the other rod will go off in just a few seconds because these fish move in schools, and when they're coming through, there may be 15, 20, 30 of them at a time together. So this business of getting hits in schools they're working it pretty close. Is it a biggie? Yeah, decent fish. Ooh! This could make the this could be the big one of the day. It no, could I'm be. Gonna, 
I'm going to swing oh, it. Oh, look at the size of that shad, will you? Hooked in the lower lip, too, Hope. Hooked in the lower lip. Look at the size of that shad. That'd be a good Will you look at that size of that shad? Wow. <sighs> what a female. Isn't that something? Yes. Look at the size. Would you? I'd call that four. A little over four pounds, wouldn't you? About close. four. About four. Yeah. And the egg row in that would make mm -hmm. a lot of people happy. They'd really go yep. bonkers over the row in that hen. Okay. But we're going to let her go. Whoops, sorry. Have a she nice let day. us go. See ya. And one of the other things about shad fishing, they actually have a lure named after this style of fishing called a shad dart. I think you've got one of them there. Yes, I do, right here. That's a shad dart right there. Now that lure just got a sloped head, doesn't have yep. a lot of action in a the water. A weighted head. Little color, gets mm -hmm. down, yep. those shad jump on it. And you'll notice that the hooks on these shad uh, lures are all single wash. They're just one single hook. Uh, hangs into that tissue in their mouth readily and it makes it easy to land those fish. They've got soft mouth tissue, so you can't put a lot of pressure on the, the fish as you hook them. Uh, if you hook them directly in the top of the lip or in the bottom of the mouth in the center, you'll land them every time. Hook them in the side, you'll lose them every time. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you lose a few, but there's just so many of them around. I mean, it seems like a few more minutes and you got another one on. Oh, we got, there's a hit. Uh -oh. All right. Big. Oh, here's one. There we go, right in there. And this is probably about your average size right here. <laughs> that big shit. Okay, we got that one. Oh, here's one. Here, Lori. There wow, look go. at the size of that female, huh? Woo! Oh, look at the size of that shad. Man, I'll tell you what. Oh, man. That fish is really going down. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, that's fat, isn't it? That is that deep and thick? Look how deep and thick that fish is. See, and again, being hooked in the bony part of the bottom of the mouth, you're not likely yep. to lose no it. No way is that one coming out. But in this paper thin material here that you would have lost that fish for sure yep might get what fish. a beauty huh that fish weighs a good three and a half four pounds huh. and the egg row in it go online to learn more about this show at northwestoutdoors.org quite a presentation and real easy too Funding for Northwest Outdoors is made possible in part by Kershaw Knives of Portland, Oregon, makers of precision tools and cutlery. Kershaw Knives strongly supports outdoor programming as well as responsible outdoor activities throughout the Pacific Northwest. And by Subaru, engineered and designed for all types of activities in the great outdoors. Subaru believes that enjoyment of the Pacific Northwest should be available to everyone. The growth of the Pacific Northwest the past few years and the increased demand for electricity is important to all of us. We at Energy Northwest are doing our best to support this demand by producing safe, reliable electrical power today and for our future. And by Alltrek.com. Alltrek provides high-performance clothing and gear for every outdoor experience, including paddling, camping, hiking, climbing, and more. Information can be found online at alltrek.com.